Through what we've covered with differentiation, some of these integrals you probably already know. Okay? So really what I want to do is take a little time out to actually make sure that you know these six integrals. You should be able to integrate these um, at any point. Okay, so you must know them and be able to recall them without having to worry about it too much. So we've dealt with 1 over x dx, okay, because we know that the derivative of log x is 1 over x. So the integral of 1 over x is log x. Now, what is different to how I've regularly been writing log of x here is that the x is contained within modular signs. Now, there is a reason for this. Because if you integrate um, a function and you get log of x and then you want to evaluate it, then what happens is that you could potentially, in plugging values in and evaluating your integral, get log of a negative number. If that is the case, then the integral doesn't work, because log of a negative number doesn't exist. So, in order to make sure that it does work, we put modular signs around what is going into the logarithm. So, you will always be taking log of a positive number. Okay? So be aware of that. And that also comes up here because the integral of f prime over f was log of f. And so that's log of f of x, where the f of x should really be between modular signs for this, exactly the same reason. Now, we know with trig that sine differentiates to cosine, cosine differentiates to minus sine, minus sine differentiates to minus cosine, and minus cosine differentiates to sine. So if minus cosine differentiates to sine, then sine differentiates, uh, integrates rather, to minus cosine. So the integral of sine ax would need to be minus 1 over a cos ax plus c. Now the reason why you've got this 1 over is because if you were to differentiate this, the a, the derivative of ax, would have to come to the front, and then it would have to cancel out this 1 over a. Okay, So in order to go from there to there, to differentiate this, to get back to that, you must have something that's going to cancel out that a coming out of there using the chain rule. Okay, so this sine ax integrates to minus 1 over a cos ax plus c. In a similar way, cos of ax, cos, cosine integrates to sine, so this must be 1 over a sine ax plus c. Okay, so in other words, cos of 2x will integrate to 1 half sine 2x. Now, sec squared, we know that tan x differentiates to sec squared, so sec squared must integrate to tan, and so this must be 1 over a tan ax plus c. And last but not least, you have e to the ax dx. So this, in a very similar way, must have this 1 over a appearing. So 1 over a, and then you have e to the ax plus c. Okay? So these are really the six results that we need to make sure that we're happy with. So let's see a couple of examples in the next few videos.